Hey guys, it's Ed. The future is now, and the future is every single vehicle on the road being an electric vehicle. Okay, is it possible? Well, I made a spreadsheet kind of extrapolating two things. EV sales and the progression and Tesla sales and their market share and progression. Uh, basically, I think that ARK, ARK Investing, Kathy Wood, CEO, CIO of that company, I think they use a very, very detailed version um, to extrapolate these things, but I've seen some of the numbers come in line. So, but anyway, I wanted to start out, let's talk about basically how I laid this out, okay? We've got the years here, we got all the EVs sold, okay? So in 2011, they sold 50,000 EVs. In 2019, they're predicting 2.9 million EVs. So, and you can see the progression of it going up and the percentage went up 60%, 40%, 30%, 44%, 27, 23. The average is 38% increase in EV sales. So, if we take that average, assuming there's, you know, remember, there's only a few car companies are really producing good EVs. Um, and, you know, Tesla definitely has a huge advantage there, but let's just... Let's just assume that they just continue at that average of 38%. Uh, 2020, there'll be 4 million and then 5.57. Bottom line, by 30, 2030, there should be 100 million sold per year. That's outlandish. That's, I think, all the car sales every year, I think. But anyway, um, and that's at 38%. If they just continue, that's assuming no other car company decides to build an EV. And there's literally hundreds of new EVs uh, coming on, nearly 100 more electric models slated, okay, by like 2023, 2025. That's, that's insane. There's going to be a ton of cars on there. Um, just for example, I showed where the Model 3 came in, Model, uh, sorry, Model S came in, Model X, Model 3. Now we've got the Model Y coming soon, the Cybertruck, Porsche Taycan, Ford Mach-E, just to name some, Ford's gonna make a pickup truck. You've got GM making electric Hummer and an electric Cadillac. Uh, you got the Semi coming out. So that basically shows that we're not, the percentage here I think is pretty fair because of all the car companies are gonna start just pumping out EVs. That percentage could even increase potentially. So we could get there, we could get to 100 million electric vehicles sold before 2030. That would be spectacular. But if we do it even by 2030, that would be a huge achievement, global achievement, I think. Now, on the other side of the equation over here, um, we have Tesla sales. Okay, let me get to it. So, whoa, we're going wild. We're going ballistic. Okay, let's go to Tesla sales really quick. So... And this is 2011, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, I'm sorry, 18. So we have the sales of Tesla, 2% market share, 10%, 10, 9, 7, 12, 17. And this is the number I think that Kathy Wood mentioned on, on CNBC the other day, that it's 17% market share. And that's the number I got as well was 17% based on 350,000 sales versus the global sales. So I don't think that was a coincidence. Now, I'm not saying they're gonna do 330, you know, necessarily. I'm just saying I think they're gonna do at least 330, most likely. And that would capture 11% of the share. So this is what I was worried about when it comes to the stock a little bit, okay? Because if they don't get to that 360 number, I mean, even if they got to 330, the, the market could still like it and still go up on Tesla stock, potentially. But because there's so many tailwinds that the company has. But I mean, if they drop the market share from 17% to 11%, I think, that, I think that analysts are not gonna like that. So the next quarter to me is probably the biggest quarter for Tesla, I think ever, okay? I think that could, you know, solidify Tesla long-term potentially. So anyway, you can see if, and I just did an average of 50,000. I mean, you know, that's just ballpark average of 50,000 per car. You can see the type of sales that they're doing. Okay, 132 million, and now they're looking at 17.5, 16 point, whatever, billion dollars, okay? That, that's pretty incredible. And climbing, let's assume, 
okay? Uh, Kathy Wood mentioned that, you know, they, what if they drop down to 6%? I was thinking, well, how is she getting down to 6%? Well, maybe over time they drop about a percent or so every year to all these other companies that are coming out, you know, with EVs. So just assume they're going to drop 1% every every two years or so, and they get, get them down to about 5 or 6%. If they get down by 20, 30, and they're selling 5% of the cars, and those amount of cars are actually selling, Tesla will be selling $250 billion worth of electric vehicles. That's just the electric vehicle side of the company. So that's pretty incredible. I don't know if these numbers, I'm going to enter these numbers in every year, like clockwork, and see where it plays out and see how that affects the long term uh the long term numbers on their sales and profitability and stuff like that uh, i'll probably do one with the whole company with the solar part with you know all parts of their you know company i'll probably do a really dramatic breakdown of you know kind of how they how they make money on all ends of their things at some point once i get some data right now we don't have a whole lot of data now Actually, let me go to the stock because I want to talk about something that happened. And I think it was, I mean, I, I know it was triggered by Elon Musk. I mean, Elon Musk announced that connectivity is going to be $9.99 a month starting January 1st of next year. And I was like, wow, well, there's about a million cars out there now. Well, that's 10 million basically per year. I'm sorry, per month. Or $120 million dollars for a year. So Tesla, that's a powerful thing again. They're flipping a switch. And you know what? I think our company should make 120 million more dollars next year. Let's do that. Okay, sure, Elon. Let's flip the switch now. It was supposed to be flipped a couple months ago. But I think he I think this was a little strategic. He saw the the stock maybe going sideways. I'm just guessing here. And was like, okay, I don't like it going sideways. Hey, let's flick a $120 million switch, light switch, boom, there it is, and we're going to have that next year. And the following year, in every million cars on the road, there's that, that, that revenue that keeps coming in. It's another revenue source for them. So that is what sent this up. This, that's the main thing, to me, the only thing, that probably because, let's see, what do analysts like? They like more money for the company. So that's what they like. They saw the Cybertruck and said, hey, that's not more money for the company. I mean, yeah, it's some, but it's not like landslide free money for the company. This is free money for the company. You know, they didn't have it before. They weren't charging anything prior to last week. And I'm pretty sure if I go back to the announcement date, if you know, leave it in the comment section, what day that he announced that, or what time of day even, exactly when that was announced. I don't remember where it was that that was posted. Um, I probably saw it on YouTube or something like that, but let's see, when was that announced and where did the stock go from there? So to me, that was almost a mechanical click. I mean, I was looking downside on this, but when it kicked up, it kicked up for that reason, because he just put a new revenue source and they're gonna be making money in perpetuity, okay? that's incredible and they could have charged let's talk about it here in specific they could have charged 1999 right no 29.99 no they didn't want they, there's a balance there there's it, it, what's called um if people you know basic economics it's called elasticity of demand or inelasticity of demand okay now if something's uh, elastic, that means it's like a rubber band. It's stretchable, it's bendable, it's breakable. Okay, if it's inelastic, it's stiff, it's firm, it doesn't, it doesn't, it's not as subjective uh, for moving. So he basically at $9.99 made it inelastic, which means everybody has to have it. You're gonna buy a $50,000 car and not spend $120 to get all those services. There's like eight features that comes with it from YouTube to streaming to music, whatever it is. There's a bunch of features on it, including satellite mapping and everything. Who is not going to buy it? If you're buying a $50,000 car, you're gonna spend 120. So that percentage of the people that are gonna buy it or somewhere I'm estimating, this is just total guess ballpark, 95 to 98% of all Tesla owners will have this. You know, I mean, I don't see, put in the comment section if you're not going to get it, okay? I wanna see how many people, I mean, I'd love to see people just say, no, I'm not spending $10 a month for all these crazy services that are built in with the wireless connectivity. I mean, I just don't see it happening. And if he would have done a, 
a Steve Jobs or let's say an Apple thing and put it to $29.99, okay, let's say just to give it like an, an iPad reference. So I have an iPad, but it's Wi-Fi only. If the iPad was for $9.99 for connectivity to have the iPad fully connected anywhere, I would have definitely upped and got the higher model iPod, or iPad, sorry, and I would have had the connectivity and I would still have it now. But he made it so it's like a choice. Do you really want it? I mean, are you gonna, I'm not gonna spend $30 a month. That's not a value for me specifically. So he made that, Steve Jobs, or I, I should say Apple in general, made that kind of an elastic price. But Elon Musk at $9.99 made it inelastic. Plus, there's room to change the price. Let's see, kind of like Netflix or YouTube. Hmm, let's go $7.99 for Netflix, and then it's $9.99, and then it's $11.99, now it's $16.99. Hey, Netflix, if you go to $24.99, I'm going to just cancel it. You know, I may not use $24.99 worth of value every year. I mean, when does it stop? I mean, $50 for Netflix? What's their cap? before they say, hey, we can't just keep fleecing the customers anymore, okay? So, not to beat on Netflix, I love Netflix, but um, as far, and I wish I invested in Netflix, there's a, there's a sidebar, but anyway, um, so that's, that's how I perceive what Elon Musk did with the connectivity. We can all talk about all these features and this and that and specifics and times and dates and what car you bought when and all that, but that is all fluff again. The main theme is flick a switch, 120 million plus, growing every year, investors like it, stock moves up. It, I, people are confusing things and not seeing things, not seeing the forest for the trees type of thing. I mean, come on, you have to see what this is about. Why was it 9.99? They could have charged 4.99, why didn't they charge 4.99? They were charging zero before. They could have went to 4.99. Everybody that had a Tesla would pay the 4.99. But I think everybody, the normative profit there, the normative price, I should say, is probably $9.99. I mean, almost everyone is going to buy it for $9.99. Why would you sell it or give it away for $4.99 when you can sell it to 98% of the population of Tesla drivers who already have the car most of the times, and a lot of them have the car, but I just don't see it and can you go to $14.99? I'm guaranteed they're all sitting in a meeting, Elon and the team of people, what are we charging for this? You know, what can we get out of it or what's the max we can get? Or, you know, if we charge too much, we're gonna tick off the customers, we're gonna sell less cars, potentially. I mean, we don't wanna take that risk. So they sat there in a meeting probably for an hour, two hours, three hours, last in the last couple months, trying to figure this out without doing destruction to the stock, doing destruction to their car sales and making more money. So good play, 999 was probably right. I think, I mean, if it was me, I think I would have been more to the 799 side to give you a little bit more leeway of room to bump it up to 999, 1199, whatever. So, and I actually, um, I actually, side note, um, set up a Twitter account just to ask Elon Musk if he would potentially use Starlink in the future to provide connectivity to all of the vehicles. Right now, it's using the carrier, local carriers off the towers. So I don't know if he's answered yet. I haven't really checked. I don't even know anything about Twitter. But anyway, so set that up just to send them a message, see if he responds. I doubt he'll respond. But it'll be interesting to see in the future if, if Starlink has a play in that. I said that before in a few videos ago, and I'll link one of the videos in it so you can see what I was talking about um, with Starlink and, you know, the possible you know, uh, connection with uh, the internet and all the cars around the world, just having internet. That way you can drive anywhere. Doesn't matter if you're in the middle of a desert in Utah, you're getting connectivity with satellite internet. So I see that being the future. I could be wrong. Anyway, I wanted to give you guys that update, so my opinion on that. Um, and I told you where I think. Oh, the one thing I didn't get to, and I'm sorry, I apologize, but Com uh, countries and states are banning electric car sales, okay? You've got, and this isn't like by law. I mean, they're, they're, Norway is one of the first ones. Let's see if I can get the year on it. Uh, 2025, Norway. And then you've got India, 2029, Germany, 2029, Netherlands, 2029, Scotland, 2030, Israel, 
uh, France by 2040, UK banned by 2040, Ireland banned also by 2045. Now, wait, where's the United States? Where, where is it? Where is the United States? Really? Are we this far behind that all these other countries are starting to ban the vehicles? You know, I'm not trying to like say that we need to destroy companies that like that are making these cars. They've been doing it for hundreds of years. Um, you do have to push them a little quicker though. You know, you have to give them incentive. Like give them a nudge. The only nudge is that legal nudge. You know, you're gonna have, the government has to, you know, start pushing in the right direction to go that way, okay? And the fact that we're not doing it in this country just shows kind of the corruption that's in the government. And it shows the corruption that, that money causes. You know, money causes corruption. If you can buy your votes, if you can buy your way into continuing bad things, you know, I don't think oil and natural gas and um, coal are the future. I don't think that's the future we need to even be involved in. We have to move from that as quickly as possible. I'm going to leave you with that. And anyway, hopefully we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see this progress into reality. Thanks a lot.